no amount of time will ever be justice enough. She was poor. She still had so much life to live. It has been an emotional and sad day for the family of four-year-old Serenity McKinney. The little girl from Shelbyville found dead on the Jefferson Bullitt County line in 2022. It's our top story. Hello, everyone. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. This morning, Catherine McKinney was sentenced to 12 years in prison for her young daughter's death. McKinney pleaded guilty to manslaughter earlier this month as part of a plea deal. She'll have to testify against her boyfriend, Dakota Hill, who her lawyer says was the one responsible for Serenity's death. The four-year-old's body found in a suitcase last year in West Point, Kentucky. Bobby McSwine is following the developments for us today. Bobby? Well, the family was very emotional, like you said, and as expected. They say no amount of time will ever be justice enough. Even the judge in today's case says the time is insufficient for what happened to Serenity. Melody Roller and her son David, Serenity's father, both got to speak directly to Catherine in court. They want her to take accountability for her actions. Catherine's lawyer says she is devastated and understands the weight of her actions. However, the lawyer says she wants to clarify that Catherine did not kill her daughter. She says Dakota Hill is guilty of her murder. The family says they'll work to eventually forgive Catherine, and they're grateful that Serenity's life has touched so many. A lot of people have been helped by her story, and I continue to work on making her story spread further in a positive way. The Bullitt County Commonwealth's attorney says it took several months and communication with the family and KSP before the plea agreement was reached. Now the family's focus is on Dakota Hill's trial, which is set for June 13th. Shay? Okay, Bobby, thank you. Catherine will have to serve at least 85% of her sentence for that case. And happening today, a UofL student's in jail for what police are calling an alarming case of animal cruelty here in Louisville. LMPD says Prince Woodson turned himself in for li after live streaming the abuse of baby chickens. The case is a follow-up to a University of Louisville police investigation earlier this month. Woodson now faces a misdemeanor for the incident. Alexis Jones talked with an animal rights advocate about why he's not facing a more severe charge. The reality is here in Kentucky, consequences for animal cruelty depends on what kind of animal is being tortured. I think it's a huge gap in the animal abuse laws in the state of Kentucky that needs to be rectified. Advocate Joy Keeley says only cats and dogs are truly protected under state law. She says if those animals are seriously injured or killed, it's a felony. But the torture of any other animal, including chickens, is considered a misdemeanor. Keeley says this means if Prince Woodson is convicted, he can serve up to a year in prison. However, she adds, that's a slim chance. For a person to serve 365 days for any misdemeanor committed in Kentucky is very rare and particularly when the crime is against animals. According to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, Kentucky is one of the worst states for animal protection laws. But Keeley says that could all change if legislators wanted to. The people of Kentucky care about animals. They care about just solely the suffering of the animal. And our legislators should listen to this. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHS 11, on your side. Woodson's case is still an ongoing investigation. UofL says they are working with LMPD on this off-campus incident. It's been nearly two weeks and six people were shot while enjoying their Saturday night in Chickasaw Park. The second mass shooting that week, two people died. We haven't heard much from LMPD, but just today the homicide unit said it has received a handful of tips from the public and they still need more help. In a statement today, they said from all accounts, there were hundreds of people in the park when that shooting occurred. LMPD is asking individuals who have information on the shooting to provide that information, either to the LMPD homicide unit or to LMPD's anonymous tip line. Any photographs or videos taken in Chickasaw Park prior to, during, or after the shooting on April 15th can also be anonymously submitted through the LMPD online tip website. Please help us bring justice to the victims and their families. An early morning crash involving a Jefferson County school bus and two passenger cars sent six people to the hospital today. Police say four students and two adults were injured at the intersection of US 42 and Seminary Drive in eastern Jefferson County. It happened just before 8.30 this morning. JCBS said the students' injuries were minor. The bus was headed to Dunn and Wilder Elementary Schools. This afternoon, Metro Police sent us an update on what happened, saying the bus was on Brownsboro turning left with its blinker on. Two passenger vehicles traveling northbound hit the bus as it turned in front of them, causing them to collide. A total of three vehicles were involved in this incident. No word on any possible charges. 
Well, 70 degrees and sunny. What a kickoff to the first waterfront Wednesday of the season. Oh, you're going to have big crowds on the waterfront tonight. It is really nice, not as chilly as we've had on Monday and Tuesday. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine. Ben, once again, you've got the most important days to forecast for the next two weeks. Are you feeling the pressure, and is anything big changing yet? Uh, thankfully, you know, the weather's fairly quiet for us, so, so no big pressure here. And uh, throwing in another event for this evening, Waterfront Wednesday, of course, and going to be very pleasant out there. Nice and mild temperatures in the 60s. Just a pretty light breeze coming in from the northeast. Uh, just ideal out there for the bands and the, uh, all the folks uh, heading out to have a good time tonight. Uh, 68 and 67 at the airports. Uh, north wind at around 10 to 20 miles per hour. Live view over Churchill Downs here, looking off towards the southwestern sky from our U of L Health Camera Network, our Belmont Village Senior Living Camera. Temperatures in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. And look at Springfield, warmest right now, right at 72. Still just a few degrees below normal for this time of the year. Next storm system is off to our southwest. That's going to move our way kind of slowly, though. It'll stay dry tonight, and it looks like mainly dry through tomorrow morning as well. Our temps will stay in the 60s after 830. Our sunset time will start to fall into the 50s and our overnight low temperatures will be in the 40s. Clouds thicken up tomorrow morning. This is around noon for our Thursday. It looks like mostly dry through lunchtime and then that rain overspreads our area as we head through the afternoon. Could have some heavy downpours every once in a while. No severe weather, no flooding expected, but we could actually use that rainfall as it's been a pretty dry April. Partly cloudy tonight. Forecast low temperature 47 around 60 at lunchtime tomorrow as it gets cloudier and then plan on that rain in a wet afternoon tomorrow with that high of 67 degrees. We've got some more big Kentucky Derby Festival events coming up as we head through the weekend. We'll have a close look at the, the forecast for those events just ahead. Okay, Ben, thank you. JCPS wants to make sure guns aren't coming into their schools. Just last night, the school board gave preliminary approval to move forward with a new plan. It doesn't include metal detectors, though. Rather, it's a weapon detection system. JCPS says metal detectors would take more time and would require students to take off items when they come into the school. The weapons detection system would use artificial intelligence to detect guns or explosives. But the system is not on autopilot. It needs to be manned with staff members to get the students through the line, one of the staff members being an armed guard. Students are walking through with all of those things on. <laughs> Shoes, jewelry, belts, my backpack, my purse, my coat. That is a very different scenario than walking through, having everything looked through every day for multiple reasons. Time is a huge one. There will be time for public comment before the board makes a final vote on the weapons detection system on May 9th. Schools across the country are seeing a dangerous trend. There's been a recent spike in the number of fake emergency calls and new technology may be a reason why. It's called swatting, putting in a fake threat to a school's campus in order to have law enforcement or emergency services swarm the area. It's incredibly dangerous and has law enforcement departments around the nation on edge. Since last June, about 250 colleges and 100 high schools have received fake reports of bomb or shooting threats, causing chaos and confusion and forcing law enforcement to expend vital resources. Experts say technology, including artificial intelligence, has helped swatters, allowing them to disguise their voices and help make their calls untraceable. Technology is being used. You're using a voice over IP. So these are not, you know, old analog phones that are being used to call these in. This is all voice over the Internet. Um, it's all using AI and, and other tools. The FBI does not track swatting because it's not a categorized crime. Experts fear all these false alarms will prompt people to let their guard down, creating an opportunity for something far worse to happen. 